Hi, real quickly, I'd like to review with you some of the important concepts that we're covering in this particular module. Probably the first thing that's important is the basic accounting equation. This is kind of the uh, very basic, fundamental uh, beginnings of everything we're going to do here going forward. So it's really important that you learn this formula. It's assets equal liabilities plus equity. So assets are things that you own and liabilities are things that you owe and equity is the difference between what you own and what you owe. So for example, things you might own, a car, a house, a boat, um, a TV, computer, books, clothes, all that. Co companies own different kinds of assets, things like supplies, inventory, um, cash, buildings, equipment, furniture, and then things you owe, well, you all know you probably have credit card bills or student loans or home loans or car loans. Businesses have similar liabilities, so they may um, have outstanding loans as well that they have to pay back. And then equity is typically, let's go down to the next slide, typically broken into common stock and retained earnings. So common stock would be provided to owners of a company, shareholders. And retained earnings I kind of liken to a business savings account. So any monies that they make during their normal course of business that they don't pay back to the stockholders is their retained earnings. So common stock is given to stockholders in exchange for their investment in the business. So we'll follow up on that a uh, little bit further on here. And we can also further expand the equation for retained earnings. So our revenues minus our expenses will give us our net income, which is a component of retained earnings. Uh, a company would pay out dividends to their stockholders. So their net income minus any dividends will go ahead and give us our retained earnings. And again, we'll elaborate on that as we look at the financial statements here. There are four primary financial statements that we have in accounting. The income statement, statement of changes in owner's equity, a balance sheet, and a statement of cash flows. So all companies would prepare these, or at least a, a good majority of these financial statements. first one we're going to look at is a balance sheet. Now it mirrors that basic accounting equation that we talked about a few minutes ago. So our assets equal liabilities plus equity. And you see here we've got assets equals liabilities plus equity. What we own equals what we owe plus the difference between what we own and what we owe. If you see that spells ale, I like to tell my students, if you drink too much ale, then you get out of balance because that's exactly what goes on our balance sheet. Assets, liabilities, and equity. Now you can see them in the format here. They're side by side. It kind of mimics the um, equation or they can be top to bottom. So assets on top and liabilities and equity on the bottom. So we'll subdivide our assets into current assets, those that are expected to be used or consumed within the current year. And then we'll have long-term assets, which is this section down here. Those um, are long-term. They last more than a year. So let's go back and look at our current assets. Cash, that would include savings account, short-term investment. Accounts receivable, this confuses some students, this receivable component. So it means we've gone ahead and delivered a a product or provided a service to a customer and sent them a bill. Now they owe us that money. We're going to receive that money from them. That's a receivable to us. It is considered an asset. It has value. It's something that we could sell if we needed to. Do not confuse that with accounts payable, which is a liability. That's something that we have to pay. For example, we went and got office supplies at Office Depot. They're sending us a bill. That's a liability. So payable is a liability, receivable is an asset. Merchandise inventory is another kind of current asset that a business might have. Um, supplies is another one until you use them and then they become an expense. 
plant, property, or and equipment, land, those are all long-term assets as well as intangible assets, things that you can't touch like patents, copyrights, uh, trademarks. And then we have this thing here called accumulated depreciation. So when you buy an asset, you're going to value it at what it cost us, which in this case is $40,000. Then as it loses value over time or because of obsolescence or use, it will have depreciation. So our value of our asset, 40000 minus the accumulated depreciation, would give us the book value of that asset of 36000 Looks like those are pretty new assets here because there isn't a lot of depreciation on them. So if we take our current assets and we add them all together here, you'll get 284000 Add that to our long-term assets minus our depreciation, you'll get total assets of 320000 Now if you look, your total liabilities plus equity also equals 320000 These must equal or we made a mistake and we did something wrong. Again, it mirrors this basic accounting equation up here. Current liabilities, we have short-term debt that would be due within one year. Accounts payable, I already mentioned, this has an other. So we would add those up and we'll get total current liabilities added to our long-term debt, our long-term notes payable. Notes payable is another type of liability uh, that is a more formal written promise to pay and usually carries interest attached to that, so it could be long-term notes payable. Add our current liabilities and our long-term debt, that'll give us total liabilities of 117000 That's what they owe. And then their equity, their common stock and retained earnings of 203. Those two get added together, and that should give you your 320. Next, we're going to look at the income statement here. Sorry, my slide's moving a little slow, but the income statement tells a company how well we perform during a particular period. Oh, I should have mentioned the um, header back on the balance sheet. It's a balance sheet as is as of a specific date. So keep that in mind. As of August 31st, our assets were this. As of August 31st, our liabilities are that. Compared to all the other financial statements which are for a specific period. And it's very important to read that to see what the period is on those. So this is for year ended August 31st, 2011. So what you can see our net sales are $1,200,000. Cost of goods sold. So the company sold or had revenues of $1,200,000. The merchandise that they sold cost them $850,000. That left them with a gross profit of three fifty. dollars So $1,200,000 minus eight fifty dollars gives them their gross profit. So it's a very important number for businesses because with that gross profit now, they have to pay out all their expenses in addition to paying themselves. So the gross profit has to be high enough once they uh, to cover those expenses. From that, we would subtract selling general and administrative expenses. That's a pretty common titling SG&A expenses. That would be any uh, rent expense, advertising expense, human resources, accounting, uh, utilities, anything they need to operate their business. And then once we subtract that from gross profit, we get our income from operations here, which is $39,000. So that's how much money they have um, before paying their interest expense. So they on the, uh, that loan, they had some interest expense, so we'd have to subtract that to get to our income before taxes. Then we'll subtract out our income taxes. Unfortunately, Uncle Sam takes the money and we get down to a real net income figure, which is $18,000. So earnings per share of common stock outstanding is $1.80. We'll have to see how many shares of stock we have outstanding. We would take the net income divided by the number of shares. So out of that million two that they earned in their operations, they get a take home $18,000 and that they will be able to share with their stockholders as well. The next financial statement here is our statement of changes in owner's equity. And it's going to detail for us the amount of common stock that we have outstanding. So let's look here. P our paid in capital is what they call it. it consists of common stock, which is at par value, and the number of shares issued. You'll also see shares are authorized. So they have $10 par value stock times 10,000 shares issued. 
So par times shares issued will equal a hundred thousand dollars there. Or uh, ten dollars times ten thousand is a hundred thousand dollars. That's how we calculate the value of the common stock there. This fifty thousand shares authorized means they could authorize an additional forty thousand shares. They have that available to them in their charter. But right now they've only issued ten thousand shares. This additional paid in capital is the extra money they received in addition over and above the par value of that stock. So the total balance of their stock is $190,000 there. Now retained earnings section here. We start with the beginning balance. This happens to be zero. It looks like it must be a new company. Otherwise it would be the prior year's ending balance. So this is for year ended August 31st, 2011. The beginning balance would be the ending number from the August 31st, 2010 statement of changes in owner's equity. Then we add the net income, which came right from our income statement. We subtract any cash dividends. This is 50 cents per share times 10,000 shares. That would be $5,000. So that gets subtracted to get us our ending balance and retained earnings. Add that together with our uh, stock. 13,190 that gives us total owner's equity of 203. Remember it's common stock and retained earnings. This formula here never changes. So this part of the statement of changes in owner's equity. We always start with our beginning balance of retained earnings. And again, you have to refer back to see what the beginning of this period is um, to find that balance, the ending balance of the previous period. Add any net income from the income statement abbreviate there from IF, subtract any cash dividends and a net loss. So if we didn't have net income and we had a net loss, it would also have to be subtracted to get our ending balance and retained earnings. This number now you will see on our balance sheet, the total owner's equity there. And the very last financial statement that we have is our statement of cash flows. And real quickly, I'll run through that with you. We have to find out where a company is using its cash. Where is it getting its cash? And um, how is it spending it? And we have three categories here, operating, investing, and financing activities. So operating activities are from the day-to-day -day operations. Investing activities have to do with long-term assets. So things like property, plant, and equipment. So if they buy it, it's an outflow. If they sell it, it would be an inflow of cash. Financing activities have to do with our creditors and stockholders. So any monies that we pay out to our creditors, sorry, not sure what's going on there. And our stockholders would be uh, financing activities. So if we issue stocks, that's an inflow. And remember, this is a day-to-day -day day activities. Let me show you a more complete statement of changes. So we would list the inflows and outflows. And we should come up with something that looks more like this. The statement I'm going to show you is actually prepared using an indirect method because it starts with our net income. And then we make adjustments based on changes in our current assets and our current liabilities to come to net cash used by operating activities. Again, it starts with net income. This is an indirect method used by most companies. And then we add or subtract based on um, a table. And you can see in, on the, uh, in the PowerPoint slide, you can review what those would mean. So operating activities, they lost money, $161,000. They paid for some equipment, 40,000. So they bought some equipment. This is where they got their money this particular year. They received $50,000 cash from issuing debt, and they sold some common stock. So they're not generating it from their operating activities, but rather borrowing it from their stockholders here. So it's quite an enlightening statement to see where companies getting their cash and where they're actually using their cash. So I hope that's been beneficial. Thank you.